Welcome to another episode of the S52E34. Today is an episode that would be nice if we didn't have to make, but it's expected when you're doing a whole engine swap and stuff. So this episode is the troubleshooting the issues that we have episode. So if you watched the last episode, you know that we started it up. Everything, well not everything, but most things were in order and it seemed pretty good and everything seems to be all right. We had the bad lifter tick, which sorted itself out, like I said. That's just what happens when an S52 or an inline six like these sits for a long time. But if you remember, there's four things that we were facing at the end of that episode. We were facing the Vanos, which I'll put the noise in if you guys forgot. The Vanos is absolutely rattling horribly, so we need to do a Vanos rebuild, which I got all the tools, I'll grab in a second. The second issue was no temp gauge on the cluster, so that needs to be sorted out because that's kind of important. The third issue is a check engine light, which is throwing a very weird control unit memory error code, which is random as all hell. So we have to figure that out, which I'm not looking forward to because I've never, I, don't, I have no idea what that could even be. And then the fourth thing is the coolant leak. But I fixed the coolant leak prior to this video because who wants to see me do that job twice? All I had to do was get a new thermostat O-ring and I got the new orange O-ring and uh, the coolant leak fixed itself, luckily. To start, I am waiting on Eustace and we are going to tackle this Vanos. There's no shame in admitting that you're not comfortable doing a job by yourself and that's where I will admit to you guys right now. I actually haven't had to rebuild a single Vanos unit. I've somehow, all my cars gotten lucky, they've never needed a rebuild. You know, I've messed with Vanos's before, but usually what I'll do is I'll just swap in a whole unit. But this unit looked good, so I'd rather rebuild it. Here's what we needed. And luckily, shout out to my buddy Mike, had all this stuff brand new just laying around. So he uh, he came by one day, or he's responded to my Instagram story, and he's like, yo, I got what you need, and this is what I need. We got the single Vanos rattle repair kit, which is literally like a little like circle, circular thingy here. Then we got the Vano seal repair kit, which is the Teflon t seal and the O-ring, which is for the, obviously, you know, seals. So that's all that it consists to rebuild. That's all you need. And then you need some special tools here. You need the 18 millimeter modified socket, which is literally an 18 mil with a flat, uh, with like no chamfer. So it's like a flat face. Usually they have a little bit of chamfer to them. So he brought me that. And then also this thingy right here. And what this is, is magnetic soft jaw vice liners. So basically you put these around a vice and they're soft and magnetic. So I believe, and you'll see later on in the episode when I understand what I'm doing, when the Vanos unit's off, you gotta pull out like the something and you need something like this so that you don't gouge it because it's important not to gouge. So you need all this stuff and then we need a timing kit because we're gonna lock the timing. So. I don't even know how to use this. I'll wait for Eustace and I'll go over how we're gonna use this. So this is a nice familiar site that I just, you know, just did all this, but it's all undone now. So I got Eustace here. We got the tools. Let's hope this all goes well. So first step, take this off. Okay. So now we gotta spin the engine, give it a TDC. Yeah. Spin it until, oh, hold on. There's a mark. On this, right? Yeah, you, let me show you which mark. So there's a mark on the harmonic balancer. You see this mark right here? Right there. You see it? Yeah, OT white. So I gotta get that. Yeah, and then you look at these lobes. You see these lobes are getting close. Yeah. And then these, oh, actually, no, you gotta spin it one more full rotation. Because these lobes have to face each other. So one rotation, they won't be facing each other, and then one they will. Yeah. And then those have to be flat, right? So yeah. lock them. Alright, you're fine. Leave it right there. That's good. Yeah. I mean... So these are pointing at each other. Those are... I might go a little bit. A little bit, but let's take those bolts out and then we'll put one of those in and then we'll spin it. Okay, so the two blocks at the back are both uh, parallel with the head and then these front two lobes pointing at each other. So that's how you know you're at TDC. Now we got to take out the back studs for the valve cover because the timing tool bolts onto that. These are the BMW tools for timing it. These go at the end of the cylinder head and then well, this locks it. Sif, flush one, with the that head, one right? flush this one at the time. Once you turn this one off. I think your timing's off. You think so? <laughs> I don't think so yet. 
How's was the other one lined up, but that one's not. Uh -huh. Maybe the timing is off. That one's kind of flush, but that one's definitely not. Turn it back to the This is primary chain. This has like something has a little slack, so oh. it's slower than the other one. Oh, so that's normal? Yeah. All right, so we got them blocked off. So now we have this. I mean, not necessary, but if you have it, might as well use it. What is that? Lock, lock it, lock it? Yeah, it goes here. Oh, look at this. We got all the right tools, man. So can you do a Vanos without using these tools? You can. But if you watch it's black video. Right. <laughs> and then I tried it and you can do it. You do it very sketchily, you loosen all these front bolts, and then you loosen these bolts right mm -hmm. here. Wait, yeah. The bolts that are right here, you loosen them one by one and you slowly work the Vanos out. And then once you work the Vanos out, this part stays in here, this part is out. Because all that's in yeah. here is this piece. So what we're doing, we don't have to do that. We'll have to do that, but out of the car. Oh, is that what Black did? Um, in the car? In the car. Shout out well, to Black. He's probably going to be watching this. So I got the Vanos on it unplugged. I got to take the Vanos feed line off, which is good because I didn't admit this in the other video, but I didn't replace the crush washers because I didn't have any. I replaced the ones down there that are hard to get to, but not here. Yeah, I got a whole set of new ones, which is good. No oil came out of this. Maybe my Vanos is starring of oil. Oh, so oh, I guess now can I can ditch this. the bracket, yeah. Nice. I can ditch the uh, headgear. This this reminds me of the um, the braces. The kid from Ed, Ed and Eddie with the with the headgear, the <laughs> Jimmy or whatever. <laughs> That's why I liked it on here. You need a long term. The stuff that is here, here, valve core stuff goes there. Where are you putting these? On the radiator. Want to make sure that we have some sort of order here. Yeah. Work, working with two people is never easy. We have order. That's right. I do most of my jobs by myself, but I had to call in backup. And there goes our Jimmy headgear. So he told me to delete this, but I didn't want to loosen it and take it off because I was worried about the Vanos, you know, leaking. But now I had an excuse to take it off. As you can see, it's not doing anything because I don't have any EGR stuff on this car anymore. So now it's really going to look like a M50, honestly, with a beauty cover. So. Everything's gone. I don't know if I ever showed the channel the 3.2 stamp, so they, they could think this whole thing's a lie. And I'll, imagine all this is just an M15. All, all you did was add Vanos. Yeah, all I did was add Vanos to a non Vanos. And told you guys I put an FD2 in. So, so you gotta push down the tensioner, small Allen key. Small Allen. And then there's a little hole here that it goes through, and this is what basically holds the tensioner down to put slack on the chain. Yeah. Forgot to take these two covers off, which access these. So, uh,. I don't know why we have to do that, but we'll figure it out, I'm sure. We have to do that because these bolts are in there. Because so we have to spin this to get it out, right? And they won't spin if they're in? Yeah. Okay, now it makes sense. Oh, because mm. oh, two here Hold and then on. two on the top. And you can't spin this because we blocked it, right? Mm -hmm. Now it makes sense. Oh, wait, should I shove a rag down there in case we drop something? Yes. Yeah. I think I found this on the floor, but... Okay, it'll, it'll do. It'll do. I'll let Josh do the honors. So. Yeah, so I'm here clockwise while you wiggle the, the vanos off. Okay, right. Okay, no. Oh, I see how that works. Oh, real nice. And there she goes. And the vanos is out. That was pretty smooth. Yep. That wasn't bad. This all looks okay. Now I understand why you do what you do. It all makes sense. Mm -hmm. Honestly, once you do this once, uh, this isn't this isn't too bad. Here is what pretty much makes your noise. This moving around, they'll all have a little bit of this. Some worse than others, but I don't know. I've had some that felt way worse than this, but it was loud. Then there's the old metal gasket, which luckily I have one laying around. So I'm gonna reuse or replace that. Now we head to the workbench. All right, we're on the workbench. We got all our tools and new kits and stuff. So now, take these off. Oh, there goes the workstation. Hold on, let me get some, let me get a. I'm making do with what I got. Quick ice cream break. 
okay. Don't, don't cut me. Now, this is where the precision comes in. We gotta do a little crosshatch cut on the seal. We cannot score things. So, just go down. Yeah. Poke it a bit down. Ah! Oh, Careful. That's exactly what you don't want to happen. It's better to poke it, not to actually cut. Just keep poking it down. Good now. There you go. Ah, oh, that was not, not fun. Oh, right into the hand. Yes. Old O-ring off. Before we put the new seals in, we're setting up to do the rattle repair. We got the soft vice. Oh God, this. Soft vice liners on the vice. Okay, so Bison or whatever has very specific instructions about how this has to be in here. Basically, you get this hole so that it sits on the on the uh, liner, and then on this side, the other hole that kind of sticks out will be in the V jaw. And uh, yeah, they're very they're very critical about this part. Do you have this tightened down? Mm -hmm. Okay, tightened all the way. So now I have a crappy vice. I'm gonna need you to hold it back here. And it's not reverse thread, right? No. no, it's not reverse thread. Left. Is this a half inch? Yes. So I gotta grab a half inch. Oh, so you need the uh, special thing which has no chamfer here, as I said, because this is only three millimeters, this bolt head, so very hard to get something on it. Press it. In. Press it in and. There it goes. And see, it slips off very oh, easily. Oh, it slipped off or did it get loose? I think it loosened. Yes, alright. Nice. So now you take it out of the vice jaw liners. And you put the piston downward and then you do the rest of the loosening. I think you do that so that all the things that are packed in here don't slip out. Oh, it's part of this, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it came with the the washer. So you have to take note of... And Bison has pictures of everything so you can't really lose the yeah. Shout out to Bison. Nice. <laughs> Remove the bearings. Okay, so this is reverse threaded T30. Oh, it's spinning. Oh, also it does. Piston. So you do actually have to clamp that piston in there. Yeah. So this is going to have to come off up a little bit, right? Oh, I thought it stripped. <laughs> I almost just cried. Okay, so now we split the split the bearing housing a little bit. So now we got to get this inner ring out just with two index fingers. Well, this is how you can tell if it's been replaced or not. Bazon. Stamps it, huh? Says Bazon. Yep, so it has not been replaced. Clean all these, it says, and then we will begin the reassembly process. Everything's clean, now it's time for reassembly. Start with the washer, fingers. Easy enough. So now ring insertion? Yes. This like this? Mm -hmm. Then this goes on it? I should have put them together. Mm. Doesn't matter. That's in all the way. So now reinsert everything. They're all interchangeable, so you can't really mess this up orientation-wise or anything. Now we put back in this with slight torque, six foot-pounds, I think it said. That's got to be it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, one more bearing, more washer. It's going right Wait, 30 foot-pounds, right? Yeah. So you gotta orient this another confusing way. Kind of, you, it kind of self-explanatory. Once you get going, like this, just has to rest on there. Thirty foot pounds, confirm. Thirty foot pounds. Yes, sir. Fine. Okay, now torque. There we go. Can barely hear it, but we did it. So now, this is all set. So now, if you'll notice, when I get this out. Compared to before, I think I filmed the before play, right? Maybe. Look at this nothing so still spins what you want 
So now I've heard some things, so non-M3s, this moves a little bit on them and you kind of have to play with the, the uh, you might have to sand it down and play with the tolerances, but now it says on Bison, M3s and cars with strict cams want no play. So this does not move at all, as you can see. And like I said before, this thing was all over the place. So no play radial, no play axial. This is a nice, good, solid rebuild. So now we got to put some oil in here, pre-lube it a little bit, and then let's get these seals on and time to reassemble. Okay, so I put the O-ring and then the Teflon seal on off camera because I had to go on the floor to do it. Wasn't too bad. Okay. Okay. So oil there, now what, oil here? Yeah, oil around here. Can I just pour some in? Yeah, and then... Oh, that was a lot. That's fine. Is that it? Let it sit in there for about two minutes. It basically shapes the Teflon, and now we reinsert for the final time. And now this should this should be hard to do, it says, because it's a new seal. So comparing how this pulled in and out prior to now is how the, that shows you that the seals failed. When we first did this, it would pull in and out effortlessly. Now you see a lot of effort, so that means that the old seals were bad, which is cool. Voila, we have our Vanos unit rebuilt, ready to go in. New Vanos gasket. I've had this for like two years. I can't believe I've held on it for this long, but luckily I did. Prior to installing the Vanos, you want to use this little tool and make sure that this is as far clockwise as possible. So you can see there, all the way clockwise, can't go any further. So that's good. You insert, rotate the helical gear a little bit until it stops. It is critical to insert into first possible gear spline alignment. Push Vanos in while turning sprocket. Insert Vanos onto engine head, then Vanos top corners onto mating head dowels. That's it? Okay. All right, it's on. Now we're gonna tighten all the nuts to the body, put the e-torx back in for that little plate, and then pretty much button this up. I'm gonna zip this really quick, so, cause this is already a pretty long process. Everything's back together. Now let's start this thing up. Very anxious. Mm -hmm. Smooth start. No check engine light? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, that started out smoother than it, than it did prior. I don't know if that would be related at all, but... Sounds quiet. That's that stupid ass exhaust rattle. I don't want to run it too high. Sounds perfect. I don't think the rattle's there. <laughs> I think the rattle's gone. Woo! Woo! I think. Looks like we know what we're doing a little bit. My first Vandals rebuild, man. I'm stoked. Woo! Sounds quiet. Things running mint. I think tomorrow, after we iron out these other issues, we'll go on a test drive. Check this out. So this is not coherent with the video because I'm doing this at one in the morning and I just wanted to test something out. So I'm messing with my temp sensor here. I changed clusters, no avail. I did the cluster test. Cluster does a full sweep with the temp gauge. So you'll see, temp gauge is like at like cold. So when I turn it on, it jumps right up to cold, right? And that's what it stays at no matter how hot the car gets. Could not figure out what the issue is. And I'm like, all right, so is it the, the adapter? Couldn't figure that out. I swapped in OBD1 sensors to see if hooking it up would change anything. I went over to this car, unplugged it, and saw what the cluster did to see if it was like a no connection thing. With it unplugged, the cluster doesn't even move. But this cluster is jumping, so I'm like, all right, what's going on here? So you'll see what I just did. Now if we come over here 
and unhook this IAT sensor. Check this out. Cluster does not jump. It goes to where it should when you start the car. So what that means is I think what I have hooked into my IAT is actually a coolant temp sensor. And I mixed them up. Remember when I put this engine in, how I mentioned the harness was difficult because nothing was in the metal like outlay, so they were all over the place? Well, I, to the best of my ability, tried to get everything in order, and I think IAT sensor went to the wrong place. So, conveniently, when I was troubleshooting ECUs, which we'll get into in the second part of this, or I guess I don't know what part of this video... When I have the RK chip in, the car throws the yeah, the stored memory code with the stock ECU or a stock chip, I get an IAT code. And that would make sense because I think I have a cool temp sensor hooked up to the IAT. So I'm going to go ahead and swap those around. I got to work through one of the manifold and I'm going to see if we have a working temp gauge. I'm not going to be able to figure it out till the morning, but exciting nonetheless. I think I might be getting somewhere. This is one of those things that was just very hard to like film and troubleshoot because I mean, I spent hours and hours and hours on this. You know, Google, uh, I phone calls with friends, Ben Adler, I talked to my buddy Ben, I talked to Dakota, I talked to Mike, I talked to a lot of people trying to get ideas about this and we were all just super hung up, right? So I added tons of grounds. I cleaned my main grounds down there, ground there is good, I added grounds. I tried to put these separately because there's two harness grounds. I split them and did them grounded into different places. Nothing changed the code. So I'm like, all right, time to get ourselves a new ECU. So I got my hands on a red label. Funny enough, a red label that I actually sold someone with an engine swap and he's local and I was like, yo, have you done it yet? I could probably use that red label. So I grabbed this from him and I put it in the car with the stock ECU or a stock chip. And lo and behold, the car got an IAT code, which is very odd. Um, not a control unit memory supply, but IAT. So I'm like, that's super weird. So then I put the RK chip into this ECU. I was like, all right, so it must be the ECU that's messed up. I put it in this one, turn the car on, control unit memory supply, same code. I'm like, what the hell? So I'm like, all right, at this point, it's got to be the, the chip. The tune's got to be messed up. So then I call my buddy Mike, and I ask him, hey, can I borrow your DME? He has an S50 swapped E34. So he literally has pretty much what would be identical to this, RK tune and everything. So I'm like, yo, let me get your ECU and try it out. So he came by one morning, and I forgot to film, of course, because I was getting all pissed off and stressed out. And we put it in my car, and guess what? the same control unit memory supply code. How does that make any sense? A totally different ECU, a totally different chip. So at that point, I'm like, all right, it's my chassis. And I mean, I'm, I'm completely lost. And at the time, no temp gauge, no, or, uh, no temp gauge, IAT code with a stock ECU, and then control unit memory supply with a tuned ECU. Long story short, there was three connectors that were goofed up. IT was plugged into Vanos, and Vanos was plugged into coolant temp. So I didn't get a temp sensor. I, or I didn't get a temp gauge because it was reading, it was reading like a, a Vanos on or off. So it was like Vanos off, blue, Vanos on, coolant gauge red. Super stupid. After I swapped those around, I had a temp gauge, which was cool. And I still had an IT code. So I'm like, what the hell? Um, so I figured I, I fixed the, uh, the temp gauge, but still had an IT code. So I'm like, all right, what else in this harness is there that I could have mixed up, right? What else is there? The only other two prong that I knew was, or I didn't have a guarantee was correct, was the Vano solenoid. So I'm like, all right, let me swap the Vano solenoid with the IAT sensor, which I already swapped. And uh, I did that, and lo and behold, IAT code went away. But now I had a coolant temp gauge code or coolant temp sensor code. And OBD1 is kind of weird sometimes where it will only read you one code at a time, which is odd. So it went from IT and then once that was fixed to uh, coolant temp. So I'm like, all right, what the hell is going on here? Uh, I thought I had all the sensors swapped properly. So then I was like, all right, maybe because the temp gauge was working and I think the ECU was getting a signal. So I'm like, all right, I don't think my adapter is wrong. But I was like, let's throw in this engine code. Luckily, I had a spare S52 coolant temp gauge. Don't know why, or 
gauge. Coolant temp sensor, don't know why. I plugged it into my uh, Turner adapter thingy. No more check engine light at all. And I'm like, what the hell? So my brand new temp gauge that I got was dead on arrival somehow, throwing a check engine light. So then I swapped out the coolant temp sensor. No more check engine light. So I'm like, all right, beautiful. So now I'm thinking about it. I'm like, all right, let's put the arcade chip in and see. So I put the arcade chip and ECU back in, turn the car on, no more check engine light. So it turns out that I had two, two or maybe three air codes and the, uh, the arcade chip, since it's a new chip to a new like car, new computer, everything, didn't really have any basis. So it didn't know how to read the codes. It just told me like memory error. So I made all this, I'm doing all this talking to you guys to let you guys know. Sorry I didn't do in-depth troubleshooting while I was doing it, it was very frustrating. This isn't really documented, so if you ever are doing something like this, a swap or whatever, and you get a memory unit error, try a stock chip, because it's likely that your tune isn't reading engine codes for some reason. I don't know if that's an issue with the tune, or if that's just an issue with the car being a fresh startup with, in a new car, in a, well, a new ECU, new engine, new tune. I don't know what it is, but existing codes cause the control unit memory supply. So now, all the four issues that we started this video with are figured out. It took me hours and hours of troubleshooting. You guys watched the, or maybe you will watch, depends how I put this in, I don't know. The, the timeline's all goofed up in this video, I'm sorry. But watch the Vanos get redone. So now, this car is pretty much ironed out. Thank you guys for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed our little troubleshooting episode. Yeah, it's expected. When you swap a car, all this stuff, things are expected. So luckily nothing was too major. We got everything figured out. So I'm excited. I'm happy. I can't wait to drive this thing. Stay tuned for the next episode. It's going to be a good one. We're going to take this thing for our first drive. I am stoked. So I'll see you guys in that episode. Thank you for watching. Peace.